severe plaque psoriasis. Now, there's Sky Rizzy. Three out of four people achieve 90% clearer skin in four months after just two doses. Sky Rizzy may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Before treatment, your doctor should check you for infections and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, such as fevers, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or coughs, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Nothing is everything. Talk to your dermatologist about Sky Rizzy. Learn how Abby could help you save. Tomorrow, we're with Jersey Shore's Angelina talking divorce and hooking up with a co-star. Plus, only we're with new mom Mickey Guyton making history. And all rise for hey. Oprah joining the cast of her legal drama, our on-set exclusive. But we're going to leave you with James Corden and its exclusive. Only E.T.'s in the U.K. as the host kicks off his week-long Late Late Show London Takeover. But tonight on CBS, James is in the driver's seat for Lizzo's Full Circle. Happening now. We're riding along with the Texas Military Department because no matter how tough the terrain is, undocumented immigrants continue to cross over daily from the Mexico side over to the U.S. We have the story coming up. Finally, some activity on the radar screen. We'll take a close look at where it's raining, what neighborhoods are getting hit, and odds for more rain in the days ahead. See you in a bit. It looks like meat, but it's not. And recently, plant-based meats have gotten more popular. Next up, we'll describe how they taste and tell you if they're actually healthier for you. The News at 5 starts right now. At first at 5, scattered storms around the metro area. Some of the first rain we have seen in a while. And there's a reason you're smiling, right? It's exactly what we wanted. Let's go right on over to meteorologist Adam Kasky for the latest. Adam. Yeah, and the nice thing is we don't have any severe weather. This isn't coming at a cost right now. Just some areas of lightning and keep in mind lightning can knock out power for some folks if you get the lightning strikes in the specific spots. But you look at the activity and the white indicates those lightning strikes. I'm actually going to turn them off because kind of clutters up the screen a bit. Let's just focus on the rain, the good, beautiful rain, heavy rain even starting farther east of San Antonio, Schulenburg into Hallettsville, even stretching towards Shiner earlier. We had some heavy rain. You move into Cuero and you see this line here, that green line. That's the outflow boundary that's been pushing southward and that's acting like a mini front in a way to help kick up showers and thunderstorms. We're seeing a lot of them in Wilson and even Carnes counties right along 181. That's a sweet spot for areas of rain and especially just south of town in Atascosa County. Locally, not a whole lot of action right now and even north of town. Just some light rain left over. We're going to take a look at how much rain has fallen so far and of course a rainfall potential for the rest of the night and week coming right up. Thank you, Adam. Operation Lone Star's installation of concertina wire, wire continues to expand along the Rio Grande. Thousands of military personnel working with state and federal agencies to keep a close eye on illegal activity. Right now, 5,400 military members are monitoring the stretch of border from Brownsville to Big Bend. But even with those enhanced security efforts, undocumented immigrants and family units continue to come into the U.S. Alicia Barrera spoke with officials from the Texas Military Department and shows us their first line of defense. Watch. The beauty of the Rio Grande can be deceiving. In some areas, its steps can reach a maximum of 20 to almost 60 feet. But Captain Luke Jones with the Texas Military Department says the bigger problem for federal and state agencies is on the banks of the river. What the transnational criminal organizations use to cross the river in a lot of cases is just inflatable rafts. And they'll vary where they're crossing, and so it's just uh, a game of finding out, you know, what are they going to use today. One of the things they look out for is infrastructure in the Mexican side as well as on the U.S. side. This seems to be a clear path, but the thing is, once they cross over to the U.S. side, they're looking for places to hide, and this right here could be a perfect spot. Which is why at any given time, up to 25 boats from state and federal agencies patrol to deter migrants. But so far, the Texas Military Department reports 350,000 encounters since the start of Operation Lone Star in March of 2021. The humanitarian crisis is that these people are trying to get to a place and we need to make sure that they, we you know, help them to get there securely and securely and safely and that is handing them over to border patrol in and amongst the humanitarian crisis. We have a criminal crisis as well, so we can't ignore that. Uh, we do have apprehensions. However, when asked if they're on alert for a mass migration event, 
while Title 42 is in place, it seems to be manageable at this time. But it's manageable due to the coordinated effort between us, DPS, and Border Patrol. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. I knew it. Five, two teenagers are behind bars after a drive-by shooting in Seguin. The suspects, you see them on your screen. They're 17-year-old Pablo Sanchez and 18-year-old Luis Leandro. Police arrested them for allegedly shooting a 57-year-old woman Saturday morning while she was at a home. Now, several others were inside that home with her during that shooting. Officers think that someone else was the intended target. Sanchez and Leandro were booked into the Guadalupe County Jail on a $750,000 bond. They're facing a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, but police in Seguin are saying that they could face even more charges. The San Antonio police arresting a man this morning after he fired a gun inside a northwest side home. It happened about 530 this morning in the 5200 block of Silver Tip Drive. When officers arrived, they had trouble finding out where the shots were even coming from. The officers took cover, called for backup, and once they found the home where the shots were coming from, they were actually able to make a peaceful arrest. Rifles and shields to, uh, for our protection when we approached. We didn't know what the uh, situation was going to resolve. Uh, re Is some of the bullets hit a neighbor's fence, possibly a swimming pool. No one hit by the gunfire. Police say the man told officers he was under attack. They say he'll be taken in for a mental evaluation. A woman is now recovering after she was shot last night. It happened at Pickwell Park near I-37 and Southeast Military Drive. San Antonio police say the woman was in a vehicle. She was listening to music with three other people when two armed men approached them. The suspects wanted cash and took the group's belongings. But when the driver tried to take off, that's when the shooters opened fire. The woman that we told you about was hit once, and now police are looking for the shooters. And to the west side now where two women were shot outside a home on Aztec Valley. That's near South Zarzamora and West Cesar Chavez Boulevard. It happened about midnight. SAPD says a vehicle drove up. Someone inside, inside fired more than 30 shots. A 20-year-old woman and a 61-year-old woman were hit. The 61-year-old is in critical condition. The 20-year-old listed as stable. It's unclear who fired the shots or why. SAPD says they're also not sure if the women were the intended targets. Meantime, San Antonio police were looking for two men involved in a knife attack happened south of downtown around 1240 this morning in the 2300 block of South Flores near Nagolitos and I-10. Police say that two men attacked that victim with a knife, then ran away. Now, SAPD doesn't yet know the reason for that assault. The good thing is the victim in this case wasn't seriously hurt. This is a nearly 12 year old murder case and tonight Crime Stoppers want your help solving it. In October of 2010, someone shot and killed 20 year old Eric Mendoza inside of his vehicle. It happened in the 5000 block of Village Path. People from that neighborhood told officers that yes, they heard those gunshots, but they didn't see the shooting. So if you have any information, call Crime Stoppers. The number is there on the top of your screen. It's 210-224-STOP. Remember that any information that you share that leads to an arrest can get you $20,000. A driver recovering after a fiery crash on the west side late last night. That crash happening about 945 in the, six, in the, the 630 block of Bandera Road near North General McMullen. The San Antonio Fire Department says two vehicles hit at that intersection, causing the red car to hit a utility and then catch fire. The driver of that car was taken to BAMC and treated for burns. It was a utility pole, as you saw there. The driver and passenger in the other car were not injured. And talk about a close call there. Two adults and a child are okay, and you're just not going to believe it when you see the accident they were in. Look at that vehicle. Happened last night around 1145 on Loop 410 near the Northwest Military Highway exit, which is on the north side. Now, Castle Hills police are saying the vehicle was exiting the highway when its steering just locked up. And that launched the vehicle right off the exit. And as you can see there, it landed upside down on the access road. But again, everyone's OK. Very scary. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Now the, to the latest on the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade. We know now that 26 states are likely to either ban or restrict abortion rights. Yeah, Americans on both sides of this issue are reacting, taking to the streets as women across the U.S. face a new reality. ABC's Rena Roy with the latest. 
As a new reality sets in across the country with the Supreme Court overturning Roe versus Wade Friday, Americans on both sides of the issue navigating the rapid changes. It's an incredible victory for the pro-life movement. Just pure devastation. Nearly 50 years of a woman's constitutional right to an abortion now gone, leaving abortion rights up to state lawmakers. Seven states now enforcing bans with few exceptions. An additional 18 are likely to ban or severely restrict services. Louisiana's trigger bans originally went into effect following the high court's decision, but have been blocked by a state court after a reproductive rights center filed a lawsuit, allowing reproductive health care to continue in that state. Utah's bans are also being challenged. We will get care to patients and get patients to care. We have to fight state by state now in order to make sure that people can get that. Some state lawmakers in Missouri considering legislation to make it more difficult to cross state lines for abortion care. If somebody calls a Planned Parenthood clinic in Springfield, Missouri, they're scheduling an appointment at the Fairview Heights Clinic across in Illinois. So that's Missouri activity that's violating the laws of the state of Missouri. And I would like us to see at some point look at that. The White House says it will challenge states that try to bar women from traveling across state lines to receive abortion services, though for some, travel may not even be an option, with studies showing 49 percent of abortion patients have an income below the poverty line. Some, like the governor of South Dakota, are also trying to crack down on abortion pills received via telehealth, claiming it's unsafe, although medical experts have found the medication to be safe and effective. It's, it's to stop anyone from getting medication over the Internet or by the phone from a physician and having this procedure at home unsupervised. The FDA approved getting those pills by mail late last year. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Making headlines right now, officials in Missouri are reporting multiple fatalities and at least 50 injuries after an Amtrak train derailed this afternoon. So Missouri State Police say that the Amtrak derailed after a truck was blocking a public crossing. The train had eight passenger cars, two locomotives. It was traveling from Los Angeles to Chicago. 243 passengers and 12 crew members were on board. We're going to keep checking up on the story and bring you any updates as we learn them. The January 6th committee will meet for another public hearing tomorrow afternoon. Officials expected that committee to take a break ahead of the upcoming 4th of July holiday. So far, been no word about a list of topics for the day, but the committee issued a statement saying it will, quote, present recently obtained evidence and receive witness testimony, end quote. The hearing will be live streamed and open to the media. This will be the committee's sixth hearing so far this month. Check out traffic right now. Let's go to Loop 410 in Callahan, and you can see that traffic is heavy in both directions, but it's at least moving, and this is not all that unusual for this time of day, and actually no major traffic tie-ups to tell you about at this hour. Good way to start the week. Yeah. All right, so coming up, yeah, I know, you've seen them. You've seen plant-based meat at the grocery store, but here's a question you probably have. Are they actually healthier for you than the real stuff? Yeah, we're going to get the answer for you after the break. Hey, coming up tonight at 6 with the Supreme Court overturning Roe versus Wade, the way fertility specialists handle their practice, well, it could be affected. Hear from a local leader in fertility and obstetrics tonight at 6. And thousands of San Antonians say they're ready to work applying for a city job training program. Only a few dozen have actually been accepted, though. We're going to hear from one of them coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. So now I have a question for you. I know this, but you've heard of Meatless Monday, right? A lot of families do it, saves you money, and hey, listen, we could all stand to eat more veggies, right? So what about those plant-based burgers and those little nuggets that you see in the store? You probably wondered, do they taste like real meat? Are they good for you? Well, 12 on your side's Marilyn Mortz is about to tell you. Ah, the backyard barbecue. Burgers, hot dogs, plant-based meats. That's right, as more people try to get more veggies, less meat, those faux meats may end up on the grill. But do they taste good? Our panelists thought none were identical to real meat, but some came close. We actually found one in each category to be very good. Consumer Reports checked out 32 plant-based burgers, nuggets, sausages, and more. They found the Impossible and Beyond brands to be the most meat-like when it comes to burgers. For chicken nuggets, they say Impossibles came the closest. One big reason a lot of people like to try the plant-based meats is they think they're healthier. Are they? 
While many of the products we tested had fewer calories and less artery clogging saturated fat, most had more sodium than real meat, and Americans already consume too much sodium. Take a close look at the ingredients. These plant-based foods are still ultra-processed. The evidence supporting plant-based diets points to eating more whole foods, like fruits, vegetables, grains, tofu, and beans. And these mock meats are more processed and not whole foods. Bottom line, these plant-based meats are a mixed bag. CR says while they aren't the healthiest of foods, they can be a good thing if you need to cut down on the red meat. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Decisions, decisions, my friends. I gotta tell you, look at the temperature right now. I know, we are in the degrees. 80s, and you know, I didn't get a lot of rain, I'm gonna be honest, but really big fat raindrops on my car as I was driving into work today. Yeah, it was nice to have, and not everybody got the rain, but we do have some pockets of heavy rainfall. The coolest we got from the thunderstorm and outflow battery was 84 degrees about an hour, hour and a half ago. That's after a high of 101. Shortly after the noon hour, a little compressional warming from the front that moved in. Let's take a look at the rainfall accumulations, and this is according to Doppler radar. So these are estimates. You see where most of the rain has fallen right along I-10 between San Antonio and Houston, then especially just north of town, especially as you get up into the Canyon Lake area and parts of Comal County here. Actually, our weather watcher at in Canyon Lake, Mick Homer, he measured just under half an inch of rain and Seguin, our weather watcher, Helen, exactly half an inch. Not bad. But you look over the reservoir and we can actually get to the southern shore here within this neighborhood. Canyon Lake Forest, West Haven, Canyon Springs. All right. Check out these totals and these are very similar to what actually fell over the open water. 1.7 inches. Look at 1.9 along some of these streets and uh, in parts of that neighborhood. So impressive rainfall right over Canyon Lake. Canyon Lake was fortunate. Uh, Medina Lake Reservoir, not quite as fortunate, but we did get some water in and around the watershed. Now remember, Medina Lake has a very small watershed here that stretches up roughly like this through Bandera and up into the city of Medina. So it doesn't really have a whole lot of an area to pull water from when it rains, but we did see a little bit of activity over Medina Lake and other parts of Bandera County. Keep in mind the bright green typically means half an inch of rain and the dark green translates to an inch or more. Once you get into the yellows, that's about two inch category. You look locally, little pocket here in Windcrest, and then I want to go in near Churchill High School, West Avenue and Blanco Road, uh, kind of near the HEB in that neighborhood and near Churchill High School. You look at this and pop up some of these accumulations and we're on the order of a tenth of an inch to, well, I did see about four tenths of an inch uh, earlier in terms of some of these spots, but overall uh, not a whole lot of rainfall, but at least a few folks actually uh, got some moisture, even if it's just a morale boost. There you go, a quarter of an inch near West Avenue. Okay, let's take a look at the actual radar at the moment, and you're not going to see much around town right now. Our opportunity was a few hours ago, but there's still some action out there, especially west of San Antonio and south and east. And these are just the nice spotty, healthy downpours with a little bit of lightning and thunder. This outflow boundary that's moving south and it's helping to kickstart some of these showers and storms. But again, they're outside of San Antonio for the moment. And as the hours go by, I think our odds drop off here in town. Now here's our future cast. I think it's overly aggressive here at 9 p.m. at least locally. Most of the action that's left over should be south of town. But by midnight, 1 a.m., it all comes to an end. And then we get into tomorrow, partly cloudy. And once we really get that daytime heating going, and I do think we'll kickstart a few more showers and storms starting around 2, 3 p.m. And don't pay close attention to the exact placement here at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Just the mere fact, again, that even the future cast is saying, yes, the ingredients are there and we should start to get things going. But not everybody's going to see it. We actually have it at a 40% chance tomorrow. 30% Wednesday and Thursday, or Thursday 20%, and then 20% Friday, Saturday. I think that's mostly for some of our eastern counties closer to the Gulf Coast. Let's talk about it. We have this area of very unorganized thunderstorms south of Louisiana. And this is an area that has a slight chance of tropical development, a 20% chance. Basically, it's just going to turn into one big swirl of rain off the coastline this week. And it's likely to push into Texas, but closer to maybe Hallettsville to Houston than up toward Lufkin. That's where most of the moisture should end up with that system. So I don't think we'll tap into it. 102 Catula in Eagle Pass. Look at that. But 74 in Kerrville, 72 in Rock Springs. Clearly some rain cooled air out there, even 95 Port SA, but then at the airport officially 89 and Bernie now at 77. 
73 in the morning tomorrow, partly cloudy by about 3 p.m. We should hit our high temperature of 93 degrees. Then they fall off with the increasing rain chances later on in the day. So tomorrow we'll see those 40% chances. Then they fall off, but high temperatures below 100 through Saturday. There, that's something. I'm hoping by the time this week's done, we all get some rain. Yeah. C cross your fingers, but it's unlikely. I'm crossing my fingers. <laughs> yes. Crossing our fingers. Some rain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not yeah. saying a lot, just some. We'll take what we can get. Yeah. So the Spurs, the team itself, is getting a lot younger, and we're hoping that the number 19 is a lucky one. Well, right? some of these guys don't even have their driver's licenses, yeah. which is hilarious. When we come back here, the teenagers are taking over. That's right. 19-year-olds, all three of the draft picks, by the way, in San Antonio. And finally, the Houston Texans themselves are being sued. Coming up. The first draft picks were introduced over the weekend and the first visit to the Alamo City since the NBA draft on Thursday night from first pick ninth overall Jeremy Sohan out of Baylor to number 20th pick overall and some call the steal of the draft Malachi Branham out of Ohio State to 25th overall Blake Wesley out of Notre Dame. All of them got their first chance to see the AT&T Center along with their families who also made the trip to San Antonio and the common thread for all three draft picks is that they were born the same year that the Spurs were winning their second ever NBA championship in 2003 and it made for some interesting conversation about the fact they're all teenagers we are yeah, we are just turned 19 so uh, i remember last year he dropped uh josh primo uh, he's a young cat so got a lot, a lot of young people on this team uh a lot of development so yeah it's going we got to learn a lot so we, we spend as much time teaching them how to drive as we do <laughs> yeah. teaching yeah. them how to play defense so. we still need our driving license yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. No, I do no. not. I don't even have my permits. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, so their first order of business will be to practice for the Summer League games, and they will tip off on Friday, July the 8th against Cleveland in the Cox Pavilion. This is all in Las Vegas, by the way, followed by the 10th, the 11th, and also on the 14th against Atlanta. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. In the first of what could be multiple lawsuits today, the attorney who at one time represented 24 women who filed civil lawsuits against former Houston Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson has now sued the Houston Texans team for enabling the quarterback's behavior during massages. The lawsuit follows a New York Times report that claims the Texans provided Watson with access to the Houstonian, an exclusive resort and spa where some of the massages occurred, and then provided him with non-disclosure agreements as early as 2020. Attorney Tony Busby, who has already said settled 20 of the 24 civil lawsuits against the now Cleveland Browns quarterback that accused him of sexual assault and misconduct during the massages said today the overwhelming evidence collected indicating the Houston Texans and enabled Watson's behavior is incredibly damning. Watson's hearing with the NFL to decide if he should be punished for his behavior begins tomorrow. Where according to reports, the NFL is seeking an indefinite suspension that would include missing all of next season, if not more. And that's the key, an indefinite suspension. Then it would be up to the commissioner to decide when he could play. Wow. Yeah. That doesn't look good for Cleveland. And it keeps mushrooming. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. It's nice to see this activity on the radar screen, and of course, none of it's severe. We've got it scattered about the hill country, stretching down near Uvalde, Divine, Pearsall, Pleasanton, Falls City, Poth, Floresville. You get the idea toward Cuero. Uh, this activity is going to be coming to you again and end this evening. Another chance tomorrow afternoon. All right, Adam. Thank you. See you at 6.